Hey everybody, this is Courtney Kidd from the Fleet County School of Innovation. Um, I'm here to talk to you all about my grant, Out of the Box Engineering. A couple things that we'll look at throughout the course of this presentation, including the inspiration, purpose behind it, how we intend to spend the money, my plan of action for the students, and then finally, how am I going to use this as an assessment for the things that they have learned in my class. At School of Innovation, we are in our second year of existence. And I have actually taken on a completely new pathway um, in my teaching career. Now that I'm focused on technical classes, one of the things that I have really been focused on is trying to find relevant activities for my engineering students to be able to showcase like job related skills, um, things that would promote career and in industry to them. Um, and with this grant, what I decided to do was to actually take the skill of machining, which everybody knows in the industry is really taking off as far as like um, millwork, CNC. And what I want to happen with this for my students is I want them to take their skills with machining and I want them to incorporate that into our engineering pathway of manufacturing. Um, I am lucky enough to say that my students have exposure to a uh, bench mill 6000. Um, we have also purchased two classroom glow forges for the students to use. Um, but the problem comes in that sometimes it's harder for us to get some of the supplies that we need um, from the companies, not necessarily on our state or district bid lists. Um, this grant kind of gives me the opportunity to reach out to some different partners that I didn't have before and to bring in some supplies that my students didn't necessarily have to complete what they needed. Um, again, with this, we are going to look at a prototype design. Students are going to be designing their own containers, things ranging from trinket boxes, jewelry boxes, um, card cases. So just some different things that can actually be milled on our machine. Uh, the grant will allow me to purchase um, some wood that's used in the picture there on the right. This is actually called Rin Shape. Um, it is something that I learned about through a project lead the way training. So instead of having the students work directly on metals and things like that, this is kind of like a first step for them. Uh, you will see that almost the entirety of my grant has been spent on that Rin modeling for them to make their own models, to make their own prototypes. Um, to do the project, students are gonna have to rely heavily on 3D design. As a school, we use Fusion 360. Um, my students will also be trained in Inventor next semester. Uh, this particular project, they will be using Inventor for, but it has them walk through the entire spectrum. What has to happen to actually build a prototype? Um, they go through the actual designing and blueprinting. They go through um, like writing the G code for the CNC machine to actually cut out the pieces that they design. And I have even considered one way of making this sustainable is allowing them to market their pieces or kind of have that entrepreneurship aspect to it. Um, we also did list on here a uh, drill press vise so we could actually hold the boxes in place in the milling machine. And then I put a couple of end mills on here that they would need to do the borders and designs to actually do the cutout for the projects. Um, on this screen, it does talk about the plan of action. It kind of hits on some of the things that I mentioned already. Uh, the fact that the students would be writing G code, they would be doing 3D modeling. Um, processing tolerances and dimensioning is something personally coming into this as a biology teacher and then taking on engineering. Some of this is stuff that I'd never really considered before, um, but understanding, you know, for these kids, the lid has to fit the box. It can't sit on top of it. And just the little tweaks and the little changes that they have to make in speeds and the feed rates at which the machines work to build their final products I just think it gives them a good idea of the manufacturing process and helps them understand how assembly operations work. Um, the boxes that are present on here, these are actually, um, they are also sliced from Renwood. They can be um, stained if you use certain grades. And then the top layers are acrylic that we can use our Glowforge machines for. 
Um, over to the right, this is a sample of a student writing a G code using a coordinate based system. So not only do you get the computer programming and the manufacturing, you get a little bit of that geometry, you get a little bit of that math that they need for board classes. So this project is actually designed to be cross-curricular yet again, which is a big emphasis at our school. Um, as far as assessment goes, I really want this to be more about the ownership of student learning. This is not something that they're going to necessarily take a test about when they're finished. Um, but I think them having a tangible product in their hands at the end, I think that's what keeps them motivated. That's what keeps them engaged. That's what gives them that self-direction of, you know, I realized that when I was running my trial, I realized, you know, maybe my corners aren't cutting. Maybe I left something too sharp and it's not necessarily what I was looking for. It gives them that ownership to be able to delegate and make decisions that they need to make regarding their own products. So a lot of autom or autonomy with this, a lot of choice, a lot of responsibility that I think can come from successful completion. Um, hopefully by the time that we come back for the spring summit, you will be able to see a ton of things that my students have created.